Hello, it's Reverend Tony here. Guess what I've just been doing? Yes, you can probably guess. I've been in the toilet and I've washed my hands thoroughly and dry them properly. You probably know that it's anti-bullying this week, but I wondered if you knew that on Thursday it's World Toilet Day. There's a day to remember, isn't it? 19th of November is always World Toilet Day. I'll tell you a bit more about that in just a moment. But first we begin with our opening responses. God is love, all the time. All the time, God is love. So, World Toilet Day on Thursday the 19th of November. That got me thinking about water and about waste. When we flush the toilet, all the horrid stuff gets flushed away and nice clean water fills up the toilet so that the next person can use it. I don't know whether you've ever thought about what happens to all the horrid stuff when it gets flushed away. Well, all the poo and the wee and the horrid stuff gets flushed down a pipe and it goes into a bigger pipe, a sewage pipe, and it goes to a sewage treatment centre. And there it's treated with chemicals and it's thoroughly cleaned so that it can be released out into the sea. That's great. That's one of the great things about living in our country. We have clean water and we have good sewage treatment plants that clean and treat all the sewage. So there's no risk of infection or illness or disease from that. But in many parts of the world, people aren't as fortunate as we are. In many parts of the world, many people don't have access to a proper toilet that flushes and in many parts of the world there aren't sewage treatment plants. I was shocked when I read that 2.5 billion people don't have access to a safe toilet. Well, the population of the world is 7.8 billion. So those brainy people in year six should be able to work out what percentage of people are not able to have a, a decent toilet facilities. In actual fact, it works out that just under one in three people in the whole of the world doesn't have a safe flushing toilet and the waste treated and got rid of properly. So I wonder how many people there are in your class. Suppose there are 27 people in your class and suppose one third of them don't have access to a proper toilet. That would mean that there are nine children in your class that don't have a proper toilet and only 18 who do. Imagine what it would be like if you were one of those nine people and you didn't have a proper toilet. How terrible that would be. Well, I'll come back to the toilet in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to tell you a story about water. This is a story from the Old Testament, the Hebrew part of the Bible. And it tells the story about a Syrian army general called Naaman who suffered from a terrible skin disease, a skin disease that disfigured him, made him look horrible and was increasing his risk of dying at an early age. And let's listen to the story. Naaman is healed. Second Kings chapter five, verses one through 15. Naaman was a great army commander. He was a brave soldier, but he had a problem. He had a terrible skin disease called leprosy. One day, Naaman's wife said, My servant told me you should go see the prophet Elisha. He can heal you. Naaman reached Elisha's home. Elisha sent out a man with this message. Dunk yourself in the river Jordan seven times. Then you will be healed. At first, Naaman thought it was a silly idea. But his servant said, Please go, 
This is not a hard thing to do. So Naaman dunked himself in the Jordan River seven times. When he was done, Naaman's skin disease was gone. Naaman was so excited that he ran to thank Elisha for curing him. Naaman said, Israel's God is the only true God. That story from the Bible talked about how important it is to be clean, to be washed clean. Naaman washed himself in that river and miraculously he was made clean. Well, all of us have access to clean water, so actually washing our hands, washing our bodies is not too difficult for us. The coronavirus pandemic has made it even more important though that we take precautions to wash our hands properly. And I hope you do that every time you wash your hands. But it's not just on the outside that people need to be clean. The Bible reminds us that we need to be clean on the inside as well because of the wrong things that we do, the wrong things that we say, the wrong things that we think that make us sometimes feel dirty inside. And the Bible reminds us that when we say sorry to God, we can be clean. We can be made clean from all the things that are wrong inside us. So let's have a moment of quiet now and I want you to think about anything that you've done or said or even thought that has made you feel <coughs> unclean and in the silence we can ask for God's help that we may be made clean inside as well as outside. A moment of quiet and then I'll say a prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you love each one of us. We thank you that you want us to be clean, not just on the outside, so that we don't pick up any infections or diseases, but that you want us to be clean on the inside, to know your forgiveness and your love, even when we have done and said and thought wrong or bad things. Thank you that you always give us a new start and you always offer to help us to live our life in the way that pleases you and brings glory to your name. Thank you. Amen. We are going to listen to a song now, a song about water that reminds us of the importance of water and a song that reminds us that Jesus offers us the water of life, the water that can clean us deep down inside. Let's listen to the song.
I mentioned earlier on that I was shocked by the fact that nearly a third of the world's population don't have access to a decent toilet. And I decided that I would do something about it. And I went onto a website called Toilet Twinning. And if you go onto that website, you can discover that you can buy a toilet for someone in another part of the world who doesn't have one. It costs £60 with £3 postage and you get a certificate, a lovely certificate like this one that talks about having your toilet twinned. This is one that the church has got in a place called Burkina Faso, one of the poorest countries in the world. Today, I've signed up for a toilet for a family in South Sudan. And before long, I will get a certificate and a picture of the toilet that is built through my donation in South Sudan. So for all of us, there are things that we can do to help people in other parts of the world because God wants everyone to be clean on the outside and clean on the inside too. Perhaps you can remember that as we come to World Toilet Day. And every time you go to the toilet, you can thank God that we have safe toilets that we can use and we can pray for people in other parts of the world who do not have safe toilets. Well, we're going to finish with our closing responses now. God is love all the time. All the time, God is love. Go and show that love to everyone you meet. Amen. Well, it's been great being with you for our collective worship today and I'll look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, take care and God bless.